Hi, welcome back to my new video. Again, out walking in District 7. Uh, today we're somewhere in Hunton Flat Street. So it's one of the little bigger streets in District 7 with a little more traffic. Um, I was, I said in my last video that I will make a video about like how, how I experienced to buy an apartment here. I know many people rent and uh, yeah, it's expensive to buy apartment in Ho Chi Minh City uh, for many. And if you don't have a Vietnamese wife, you can only like uh, buy an apartment on a lease. And that is about 50 years. So if you don't have uh, a Vietnamese wife, uh, you should rent and not think about buying. Uh, but if you have a Vietnamese wife, it's, uh, it's no problem to buy. So as I said, we have a child. We have a mixed, uh, a mixed child, so half Vietnamese and half European, yeah? And uh, that said, I want my child to have a um, safe and secure place to live, don't move around. Um, so it, that is, my child can focus on, on school and not moving to this area, that or a new place and so on. So we decided to buy an apartment, have a stable life. And we chose District 7 because they have the most international schools. Um, so, you know, a little better roads here, a little wider roads than many other districts. Uh, most international schools and, uh, and it's a nice area. But District 7 is an expat area, uh, mainly of like I said in one of my earlier videos, um, it's more Asian expats here. A lot of Korean, a lot of uh, Japanese, a lot of Taiwanese uh, expats here, but it also Western expats here. So it's still, I would say, probably most Western expats in District 2 and probably most Asian expats in District 7 but both are uh, like expat districts so in uh, District 7 we have the Taiwanese school the Japanese school and we have the we have the Korean school uh, we have the Canada school we have uh, um, we have, I think, two Australian international schools. Uh, we have, uh, we have uh, that South Saigon, S-I-S-S, -S -S, South Saigon uh, school, which is probably the best and most expensive school in Ho Chi Minh City. Um, and there is Renaissance, I believe, I think, is a British school. And then you have the Finland, Vietnam, school so you have many schools here in international schools here in district 7 and right outside district 7 in Yabe you have uh, the American International School and you have uh, uh, a new school that is called uh, Victoria South Saigon so there are a lot of schools here to choose from and, and you have the Royal School of course in Bumiang uh, yeah, so you have many schools here and and by that you can choose schools from different price ranges You can choose Bilingual international school or you can choose full international which is more expensive than uh, a full international they talk mostly only English uh, So that's the reason we chose district 7 to live in and the other fact, and this is one important fact for many, District 7 is slightly cheaper than District 2. So to buy an apartment in District 7, 
would save you a little money compared to buying in District 2. I think District 2 is a little overrated when it comes to price and um, I think it's more, more sensible and reasonable in District 7. So those were the two factors that decided, I mean, price of apartments and also uh, the schools were deciding for us to, to uh, settle down in District 7. Uh, now, purchasing an apartment here, something I've never ever experienced before, never experienced anything similar. Um, we bought an apartment and, and it was a, uh, it's an apartment that is only one, one year old. So there was one guy, he bought it as a prospect before it was built, built finished. And he had it and then he never lived in it himself, but he did rent it out. So he had two tenants there and they didn't want to move out. So that was a little uh, challenging. And uh, that, that uh, guy we bought from, he was uh, totally crazy. He had some, he must have had some uh, problem uh, with his mental health or something. Uh, he talked a lot of shit to the real estate agent, to me, my wife, and so on. Um, he was not happy because uh, he basically had to to sell he didn't have a choice uh, yeah so uh, but still that uh, how it was uh, I would say first we looked at many apartments and different build quality different facilities uh, in the apartment buildings and different management so some management have a good reputation and some have a bad reputation. Some are cheaper and some are more expensive. So you need to look at all that. I didn't know. Lucky my wife know. So uh, that was uh, something new I never experienced. Need to look at the management. Need to look at the apartment, the quality. We got an apartment with a Vietnamese builder and a UK um, company they cooperate with. So it's a combination of Vietnam and UK that built uh, that building or design it. The builder is one of the biggest uh, builder, Vietnamese builders and uh, they also built other luxury and super luxury buildings in Ho Chi Minh. So it's a renowned uh, construction company that actually built our apartment building. So all these factors I looked at and also I did look at uh, what's in the apartment. Uh, and everything is, everything is European mostly, yeah. Some is American but most European. So we have, uh, we have like electricity is German elevator is German uh, cooking plate and fan and stuff is German uh, the, the water battery and the sink uh, kitchen bathrooms showers are all German so it, it's good quality high quality uh, so yeah we bought that apartment and um, just to take you through it quick my wife went to meet this guy and signed a contract and paid a deposit of a hundred million gone. Then there was a time frame uh, to pay like next deposit. Uh, I think that was 1.1 billion, uh, something like that, around there somewhere. And uh, then the seller, he, he called us and he paid for the money about four days sooner 
than what the contract stipulated. So we were nice and uh, we did it. And then it was take over the apartment, getting the keys and stuff, and uh, pay, pay the last and final amount. Then the dude didn't get those tenants out, so the people renting the apartment were still there. And I said, I cannot pay, I cannot buy an apartment with some dudes live there that I don't even know, never seen. So I needed to get them out before I pay the last amount. Now, that dude and everything was very hard and we had to go to some office in District 1 and it was a lot of hassle. We had to go there two times because frankly, I basically put my foot down the first time. I did not pay because the tenants were not out. And like I say, Western people, we don't pay for somebody else to live in our apartment, right? So, uh, but here the laws and everything are very different. Um, and it took me by surprise. So in the end, we had to pay. And we got the apartment about uh, four, four or five days later. Then we got the keys. And then those two uh, that rented there was also out. So I did manage to get the seller to wake up and get a little worried. So he actually kicked those out. So we got the apartment uh, about four or five days later than uh, uh, the contract said. And uh, those guys, they, they did get out in the end. But um, they basically, it, the process took about almost a month. And in one month, those tenants could not find anything. Actually, uh, I don't think they look very much either, but that's uh, how it is. It was a very strange, stressful uh, experience to pay in the money. Uh, so billions of dong and uh, you don't know if you lose the money or not. It was a very stressful uh, situation. As a foreigner, you can buy something alone, but then it even more stress, more offices to go to, more papers, and it's, uh, it's more coffee money to pay. So um, just know that if you are a foreigner, you want to buy a loan without a Vietnamese wife. Or if you want to put your name on it with your Vietnamese wife, uh, you need to go to more offices and you need to pay more money. What I did was put the apartment in my wife's name uh, only. So on the paper, I actually don't own anything. But before we did that, we made a contract uh, through a lawyer and got it notarized. So we, in that paper, in that deal agreement, we I own the apartment. Simple as that. Uh, and and uh, so we own it together uh, in that paper with a lawyer, which means my wife cannot do anything. Furthermore, in Vietnam, when you're married, you cannot sell land or apartment alone. Your husband or wife have to uh, sign and uh, agree with you to, to sell it. If you try to sell something alone, the government will stop you, um, maybe even the, the buyer, because it's simply illegal and it cannot be done. So with a paper notarized from a lawyer, plus the Vietnamese law, uh, my wife cannot uh, do anything uh, to fool me. Uh, so we have a good deal and uh, not a problem like that at all. Uh, so yeah, that, uh, that uh, was very stressful, but now we have the apartment, we own it, we, uh, we bought all the furniture and uh, we are settled. So we, we uh, are now working and uh, things are starting to get like a normal life here now. Uh, many people rent in Ho Chi Minh due to high prices on, on uh, apartments and houses and um, in Ho Chi Minh they since 2018 built mostly high-end and luxury apartments 
and the locals cannot afford that, most of them. Uh, of course, you have rich Vietnamese, they can afford it. But the locals that work in factories, work as accountants in, in small companies and so on, they cannot afford a luxury apartment or a high-end apartment. So the, it's a lack now of uh, what they call social, uh, uh, social apartments and affordable apartments. And uh, people are not buying because they simply cannot afford the price. But the prices, the prices don't go down. So most, most apartments here is actually for rent. People uh, live there and they rent. Uh, and that's how it is. That's what you mean for you. So um, you will see a lot of people move in and out every day because they rent. Some run out of money, need to find a cheaper place. Some get a new job and move closer to that job. Some move back to the countryside and so on. You see people move every day. It's not a, not a new site here. But yeah, that was a little about my experience buying an apartment. Um, in, in America, in Europe, in Australia, you have laws, you have uh, every, everything is more easy and tidy with a real estate agent. Whereas here, it's not. So uh, I, I hear even some real estate, a, a estate agents, they actually have no clue what they do. So you can't trust them for sure either. Um, yeah, I think I'll turn around here. Uh, but uh, it's, um, it's an interesting experience. It's, uh, we, we got there, uh, there was times that I uh, actually thought I lost all the money. And there were times I thought we're never gonna get any apartment. Uh, but it, it got sorted out in the end and uh, it was a very stressful month. Uh, due to that, we, uh, I, I couldn't make videos and so on. It was a little too much. Uh, but now we're here and we're uh, back to filming and making uh, content again. So now we will continue with the more videos from the news. Um, a lot have happened in Ho Chi Minh and Vietnam. Uh, the war affects uh, economy. The economy is globally. And of course, that also come to Vietnam, not only Europe and America. So. People feel it here and uh, sales of houses and other things are uh, slacking off a bit and um, people are returning to the countryside, they lose the jobs here in Ho Chi Minh and we're going to talk more about that in, uh, in next videos but uh, and also the visa situation have changed here so that's good and um, so we got, a, we got a little to talk about in some other videos that is uh, up and coming, but for today it was a little sharing about why we moved to District 7, why we chose District 7, uh, simply because they have the most international schools here. Um, it's uh, slightly cheaper here than in District 2. And I think, like I said, the quality in many buildings here in District 7 are exactly the same as District 2. So I feel the prices in District 2 are a little hyped up. Uh, some say District 7 is very far from uh, District 1 or the city center. Actually, it's not. Um, it's about 9.5, 9.7 kilometer uh, distance into District 1 in the, in the center. But due to the traffic, it take uh, 
about 30, 35 minutes. And uh, that's the bridges from District 7 to District 4. You have to go over there to go to District 1. So um, that is the traffic jam and the traffic basically. But the distance is not far at all. So less than 10 kilometers is uh, not far. I, I cannot say that. So yeah, I think District 7 is very nice. It's uh, a way enough to get a little peace and quiet and it's only like 30 minutes and you're in in the city center so it's not far and uh, i like it here because we have access we have everything we need in district 7 and in not far to district 1 uh, and we also got a little cheaper so um, uh, and we have all the schools so if any like if one school is too expensive we can change to a cheaper if there's one school we don't like or uh, our kid don't like then we can change to another school more expensive cheaper or the same it doesn't matter but you have the options here uh, and and I think that is important also uh, we are very close to F the hospital, one of the best hospitals here in Ochimin, and with a child, that is uh, of course uh, something that reassure us that you know it feels safe to be close to one of the best hospitals in the city. So I think District Seven, based on that, is a very good uh, option for uh, many expats. And like I say, you can choose here Asian schools. American, Canada schools, you can choose European schools, international schools, all of them, uh, as well as Vietnamese schools. So you have, you have a lot here to um, explore and choose from. A lot of opportunities, different price ranges, different uh, programs, like full international, only English. Uh, you have... Um, you have uh, those bilingual where it's Vietnamese and English and you have full Vietnamese uh, so you can choose whatever you like so I think uh, District 7 is a, is a very good place for expats with children if you're an older expat don't have children or your children are adults they're not here uh, yeah District 2 could be nice because it's even closer to District 1. Uh, but then again, District 2 is slightly more expensive to rent or to buy apartment in. So you need to take that into uh, uh, consideration as well. But those are the two uh, expat districts, the biggest ones, and the reasons why the expats settle down in District 7 and District 2. Uh, also, I, you have in, in both these uh, districts, you have more uh, shops selling uh, Western food, uh, like gourmet shops and stuff like that, so you can get access to Western food and Western things more easy in District 7 and District 2 than in other districts. So that is uh, how it is. Also, the roads are a bit wider and uh, it's a little bit of space in those two districts uh, because it built a little for uh, Westerners or expats from other countries. If you go to other districts where it's built for Vietnamese, the streets are more tiny, it's more crowded, much more crowded and more noise and uh, of course very very less with international schools and shops so i would say um, if you're considering living in ho chi minh look at district 2 or district 7 as those give you most offers especially if you have uh, children in a school age well that's it for today and i hope you uh, like the video and you subscribe to my channel 
and we will do more videos in uh, not so long and uh, about different themes uh, from the news and keep you a little updated what's happening in Vietnam and uh, show you a little of the real life as you can see here so when I walk around there is no editing no fake no this is the real this is how the real streets in Vietnam is this is how the real life is every day so yeah that's it for today um, remember to subscribe and like and thank you for today goodbye